What's up? Y'all all right? Okay. Uh, can I actually come down here? I feel tall up here. I feel a little taller. Uh, yeah, a little taller. Come down here so I can look at you in your face real good. Y'all all right? For those of you that don't know me, I am Marcus um, D. Wiley. Uh, as Pastor uh, said, I, I kind of invited myself tonight. Uh, yeah, I try to see if the church doors really are open. And so, uh, <laughs> and I'm glad they were. I'm glad they were. Appreciate y'all for allowing me to come through on, on your Friday night service. Uh, what do y'all call it? Friday Night Live, yes. And give it up for everybody that's been on stage tonight, everybody that ministered. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, Pastor, are you, are you preaching tonight? And the reason why I'm asking is so I can know which, how to navigate my, what I'm doing. You're not preaching tonight? Uh, somebody preaching? Oh, it's all me. Oh, okay. Oh, I might want to get back up on stage then. I didn't. I didn't know how this was going tonight, but yeah, appreciate everything. Uh, the hospitality has been fantastic. Uh, uh, Y'all picked the right guy to come pick me up. Uh, DJ paid for. DJ paid for came pick me up. I want you all to know that the AC in his car works well. I'm talking about it's cool up in that joint, and so. Oh, uh, that's good. Now, I got to say this. Uh, when I got to the hotel, um, I saw a bottle of wine in my room. Um, and listen, I, when I noticed that I saw that it was apple cider. Y'all can relax. Uh, but I just want to say, because I've been to churches where they test me. And I don't pass tests well. I be trying, don't test me. I, I'm, I'm not a good test taker. Wasn't a good test taker in high school or college. Because uh, uh, I remember I was in Chicago one time and uh, I was doing a New Year's Eve service and the man uh, brought up a bottle of champagne. Uh, and I said, no, nah, cuz I, uh, I didn't order that. And he said, no, nah, compliments, you know, uh, the hotel. And so the folk from the church came picking up. I went and did the show and I had told them folk, I said, listen, uh, in case whoever gonna come back later tomorrow when I leave to see if I drank what y'all left me, save your gas money. I'm a drink. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I just told the truth. I just told the truth to the people. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't bring it to my room because I'm, I'm, I'm a drink it. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know who sent it, but uh, you know, I took care of that. Okay. So let me get to it. So y'all, you can relax. I'm saved. I'm saved. Yeah, I'm saved. Uh, I'm a preacher's kid. Uh, and I'm saved. I'm just one of them Christians that's on the edge. <laughs> you know, and don't push me. Because I'm close to the... Okay, I'm, okay. I'm just trying to see what type of church I'm in. That's all. I'm, this is what I'm feeling. I'm feeling y'all out right now. I'm feeling y'all. I'm a preacher's kid. My father's a pastor. My grandfather's a pastor. My great-grandfather is a pastor. God called me the pastor. Uh, then he called me back, said he had the wrong number. <laughs> he got jokes too, he got jokes. I've been in church my entire life, my entire life I've been in church, and I don't know the difference between a test and a blessing. I don't know when God is testing me or when he's blessing me. Yeah, I was at my favorite restaurant, it's called Chili's. I love the chips and the salsa. Yeah, and I'm at Chili's, and the waitress brought me my bill. My bill was $17. I gave the waitress $20. She brought me back $75 of change. Is that a test? Oh, is that a blessing? I guess that depends on if you saved. Or if you're saved and delivered. Because if you're saved and delivered, that's a test. But oh, if you're just saved. <laughs> May not come when you want him. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I kept that change. I, I did, I kept that change, man. Gas was high, I kept that money, man. And y'all, I am, uh, 
You know, I'm, I'm one of these Christian guys that's, uh, you know, I, I'm a regular guy, regular guy. What I mean by that is I, I grew up in church. Um, you know, I've worked in every ministry at the church, but uh, I'm, I'm a regular dude. And when I got older, I got to the point in my life where I started telling the truth. And it feels good to just be able to tell the truth now. Like, uh, I don't do a whole lot of lying no more. Uh, I used to lie a lot uh, because that's what you wanted to hear. Uh, but now I just tell the truth. Like, for instance, like, I'm not a prayer warrior. That feels so good. Look at that. <laughs> to be able to tell people in church, I am not a prayer warrior. Don't get me wrong. I pray every day, but I'm not a prayer warrior. What I'm trying to say is if you're on your sick bed, don't call me. You might want to call the lady that's been up all night over there. Call her. Seems like she get a prayer through. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to call me. You ain't, don't call me because, number one, you're not going to like how I pray. See, first of all, my prayers are short. I hit it to the Lord. He hit it right back to me. I don't know who started these marathon prayers. The Bible said pray often. It never said pray long. You got to read it to know this, though, for real. You're not going to like how I pray because when I pray, I use regular words let the church say regular. regular listen when I pray I don't use a whole lot of prayer jargon a lot of whole a whole lot of prayer vernacular a lot of prayer colloquialisms I read in the Bible he my friend so I talk to him like a friend so when I pray I use regular I say stuff like God appreciate you God, good looking out on that check. I wasn't expecting that money. I mean, you know, just regular words. Not only do I use regular words, but I also pray in my regular voice. That's the voice I was born with. People who talk regular like me and then get up here and pray in another voice, they scare me. You know, they up here, talking like this, then when it's time to pray, they, eternal God, I will pray. I'll be out there like, who is this? I bet God be like, who is this? And they wonder why their prayers don't get answered. That's because he don't know who praying. Be yourself when you pray. Yeah, yeah. Sister, it's rare I close my eyes when I pray. Don't get me wrong. If the pastor say, bow your head, close your eyes, I'm obedient. But when I'm by myself, I don't close my eyes. <laughs> what friend do you talk to? <laughs> With your eyes closed. You don't be like, so where y'all going when we leave church tonight? <laughs> you don't close your eyes. I don't close my eyes. I don't. Even when I'm about to eat, Y'all, all I pray for is the food. I don't care what the occasion is. I don't care what the holiday is. When I'm about to eat, all I pray for is the food. When I'm about to eat, I don't pray for President Obama. He kind of still my president. I don't pray for, I don't pray for Afghanistan. Uh, when I'm about to eat, I just thank the Lord for this food. I'm about to receive for the nourishment of my body. Amen. Amen. Look at the food, still hot. I'm, <laughs> I'm not praying for the hands that prepared it. I'm not praying for the servers. I don't care nothing about them. Why do y'all pray for them? They got a job. Why do you, they already got a job. Pray for people who don't have a job. That's their job to serve, okay? What I really don't like is when I get to a table and people want to hold hands and pray. Man, I just wash my hands in the restroom. I don't want to hold your dirty hands, man. Yeah. Is somebody playing some music? Is that in here? Oh, that's a, okay, okay. I'm about to say, hold on, cuz. 
I'm about to say, Pastor just said he ain't preaching. You already rushing me off. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was about Yeah. So watch this, watch this, y'all. Watch this here. Yeah, so I'm 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 like one of what you call like a happy, I'm a happy Christian. Feel this. I'm a happy Christian. And what I notice in just my travels, there are a lot of folk who are Christian. They love the Lord, come to church all the time, and unhappy. And I'm trying to understand how it's like an oxymoron. It don't even go together. How do people who say they are overcomers, more than conquerors, I can do all things through grace. Greater is he. That's, I mean, they know all the scriptures. <laughs> but then they are never laughing, never smiling. Okay? And, and so it's true. And then, and then I know why a lot of times Christians don't laugh. And I know why they don't laugh. Because in this life we have this thing called um, uh, bills. <laughs> right? Can I get a witness? Bills have a way of sucking laughter right out of you. You know, you ever woke up in a good mood? You ever woke up in a real good mood? You're in a good mood. Kiss your little spouse. Hey, baby, yeah. Playing with the kids. What's up, boy? Get out of here. Then you're on your way to the mailbox. You just dancing. Ah, I got it. Ah. On your way to the mailbox, doing stuff you never do, like speaking to your neighbor. Hey. Then you get to that mailbox, you. <laughs> Them bills, they got you. I want to share with you tonight that bills are not a burden. Bills are a blessing. Got to change how you look at it. Bills are not a burden. Bills are a blessing. Bills indicate you have life. I've never seen a mailman take mail to a graveyard. Bills indicate you have life. The problem is some of us have life more abundant. That's it. But don't stop laughing. Ain't that what you've been praying for? Abundance? Christians kill me. You, you, abundance come with a bill. Yeah, yeah, that's what, yeah, just because the Lord gave it to you don't mean you ain't got to pay for it. You know all them scriptures, good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Run it. Well, you got it. <laughs> you got it. You got it. But man, but you, but you can't let, you cannot let bills, I mean, you can't let bills get you. You can't let bills get you. And this is what I learned. You can't let bills, because like I got a cousin. I mean, I feel, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm in tune with y'all now, so I can really talk regular. Um, I got a cousin. I want to show you something. You can't be no Christian and, 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 and let little things get you down. Man, do y'all know folk who don't go to church handle storms better than people who go to church? People who go to church should be storm ready. We built for the storm. But the folk who don't go to church, man, they know how to handle a storm. So I got a little cousin, y'all, his name is Little Larry. Everybody say Little Larry. Little Larry. My cousin Little Larry, he's a... Um, a street pharmacist. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Yeah. Y'all with y'all with me? Y'all yeah. know what street from from? Yeah. Y'all better. Y'all always on first forty eight in Orlando. <laughs> in here acting like y'all don't know what's going on. I watch TV. <laughs> We're live in Orlando. It's always going on out here. But listen, my cousin Little Larry, he's a street pharmacist, right? Bishop, the third time he got caught, the third time. Uh, I tried to tell him after the first time, cause you're not good at this. Uh, but he wanted to be steadfast, <laughs> unmovable. <laughs> so he kept on doing his thing, right? After the third time he got caught, my cousin Larry had to go to court and face a storm called prison. Yeah, he'd go court, face a storm called prison. Now, we're a saved family. We don't know how little Larry fell through the cracks. We saved. So we go to the court to support our little cousin because he's still family. We still love him. We ain't finna throw him away. We love him. Plus, he sponsored a whole lot of family reunions. 
we done ate the man chicken and he sponsored the t-shirts, all that type of stuff. Who are we? Who, who are we now to act like we ain't gonna support him, right? So we go to the court and we save. So we go into the court, we got our Bibles under our arm. We go into the court, we got our oil. We say, we go into the court, we got our tongue. Mama say, mama say, mama, I mean, we are ready to do warfare. That judge get up there, that judge said, Larry Wiley Jr., I sentence you to 12 years prison. It was my whole save family. Doing all that church stuff. Oh, the devil's alive. No, the devil telling the truth. Larry sold drugs. <laughs> what are y'all talking about? He lying. No, y'all know your cousin. He said no. There's oh, no weapon. No, Larry was the weapon. And they're getting the weapon off the street. But it was Larry that showed me something. Man, Larry, because my family, y'all, my family was acting a donkey. Now, I want to use the King James Version, but this is my first time here. So I'm going to stay with the NIV. Uh, but Larry was acting a donkey, you hear me? I mean, my family acting a donkey, but Larry, he was like, he looked up, he said, hey, calm down. I did the crime. I got to do the time. Man, we was like, mm. Well, that's a good attitude to have. They gave my cousin Larry seven days to report to prison, seven days to report to his storm. For seven days, Larry didn't walk around with his head hung low. Seven days, he ain't walk around with a bad attitude, talking about, woe is me, snapping that folk. For seven days, my cousin Larry. <laughs> Partied every day. You would have thought he was going to college. This is when I learned, First Lady, that people who don't go to church, when they're in a storm, instead of complaining, uh, they take advantage of their resources. Folk who don't go to church, when they're in a storm, instead of complaining, they take advantage of their resources. Because before Larry went to prison, Larry had a beer belly. Spent some time in prison. <laughs> six pack <laughs> took advantage of the prison recreational facility <laughs> before prison Larry had gator mouth teeth everywhere <laughs> spent some time in prison veneers <laughs> took advantage of the prison benefits package <laughs> better known as your tax dollars. Before prison, Larry did not know the Lord. If you would ask him, say, man, how you in the Lord? He like, the Lord? The Lord? What's the last name? The Lord what? Who? The, who? But now Larry know more Bible than all of us in here put together. Then Larry gets out of prison and he opens up his own electrician company. He was able to do that based off of the degree he received in prison, in his storm. That's how folk who don't go to church handle storm. But you let the saints gotta deal with a storm. Eh. Eh. You let the saints, you let somebody come up on your job and just, and just whisper something. It don't have to be a real storm. It could be like a storm forecast. <laughs> let somebody come to your job Monday and just like, I think they laying off. <laughs> Why, wow, Lord? I mean, <laughs> we lose it, man. We lose it. We lose it. We lose it. And y'all, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. My thing, too, I think one reason why I'm always upbeat and I stay happy is because, now I'm just saying this for me, I exercise balance. I mean, I was born in church, so in order for me to kind of stay sane, I have to exercise balance. Like, I'm, I'm on a gospel radio station. 
I, I know y'all had your London House Morning Show here. We're no longer here. They fired us. Right. Last year, they fired us. I don't know what they lied and told y'all, but uh, <laughs> they fired us. <laughs> but, um, you know, in the economy of God, termination is graduation. Yeah, we'll be back and a whole lot better. Um, but, um, um, but what happened was, watch this, watch this here. Watch this here. They had, they had, um, 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 they, them, 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 them mean people, they fired us on the radio station. I done lost my train of thought. What I can really tell y'all? <laughs> Balance. So I'm on your Lonnell Morning Show, and as soon as I would get off that show, I would have to cut on the secular radio station. Listen, I have, to, I, have to, I have to listen to secular. I have to listen to secular music because y'all, when I listen to it, I notice something: how they don't broadcast burdens in their songs. They don't broadcast bad news in their songs. Listen, now I don't listen to their songs to get saved. I'm already saved. I'm not looking, I'm just listening to this song, you know, because I need motivation. I need inspiration. I need encouragement. So I have to turn it to the secular radio station. Stay with me. I'm looking for motivation, inspiration, and encouragement. So I got to turn it to the secular radio station because they never bring me down. Have you ever listened to their words? All I do is win. <laughs> win. Win. No matter what. We riding around, we getting it. We want it, we spend it. Gold off in my ring. Gold off in my chain. Go off in my watch. Don't believe me? Oh, y'all know it. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know, because some of you was judging me at first, but now it seems like you know what I'm talking about. I heard one song, it said, I ain't got no worries. I ain't got no worries. And I was thinking, what kind of God do they serve? Well, they don't have no worries. But then I turn it to the gospel station. <laughs> looking for inspiration. Looking for motivation. Looking for encouragement. And sometimes what they seem to do is remind me of everything I'm dealing with. Now, y'all don't get mad at me because these are some of your jams. Don't get mad at me, but sometimes you got to take your saved ears off and put on just your regular ears and listen to how some of these songs sound. Work it out. How you going to pay your rent? Work it out. All your money spent. Work it out. Little bit to buy some food. Work it out. Your baby need a pair of shoes. Work it out. Then you got a light bill due. Work it out. Then you got a gas bill too. Work it out. Telephones disconnect. Work it out. Waiting on your next pay. Lord, I'm depressed. I am depressed. This is depressing. He saw the best in me. When everyone else around could only see the worst, everybody? Don't nobody I know see something good in me? Not even my grandmother? Grandmother see something good in everybody. Trouble in my way. Well, can't you go the other way? Don't your phone got a GPS on it? Avoid some of this trouble. Let me show you what I mean. And it's because it's something that's been going on for years. Now, y'all, I'm not a church basher. I love church. I'm a product of church. But I'm just trying to, 
I'm just trying to show you what, what, how, how I look at it. Um, you, you take some of these songs, watch this here. You take some of the songs like, Take Me to the King. Let me give you an example. This song stayed number one for two years. And y'all love that song. I can't stand that song. You can't stand it too? Thank you, sister. Thank y'all. Okay, thank y'all. See how good it feels to be able to say that in here? Don't you feel free, liberated? I can't stand it. Now watch this. I can't stand the song. I never even liked the title, Take Me to the King. For what? He know where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. See, because when I read the Bible, it said he come that I might have life. So what I'm in a hurry to go see him for? I like it down here. Yeah, matter of fact, y'all, my, my father, when my dad died, when my dad died, y'all, they had his casket at the front of the church. They had my daddy's casket up here in the front. And you should have seen my family and the church family, how they was acting at the funeral. Oh, they was acting up. They was acting a donkey. Oh, I want to go. Take me with him, Lord. Put me in the casket. I looked at my daddy's casket. I said, that looked like a one-bedroom. <laughs> Ain't no room in there for me. I'm all right. But people like to put on a show at the funeral because they miss the show, you know, called life. So they kind of try to put a quick show on right there. But watch this. Watch this here. Watch this here. I listened to the words of taking me to the king. Man, I had to take off my saved ears. Oh, my goodness. This is the number one song in the country playing on secular stations and gospel stations. And the words, truth is, I'm tired. <laughs> That's the first line. Truth is, I'm tired. Why are we always tired? But over on the secular world, they say, I don't get tired. I got six jaws and I don't get, y'all know it, I don't get tired. But why are we tired? Yeah. Options are few. And you want me to join your church? I'm trying to pray. Where are you? I'm all jump ministered out, <laughs> hurt, abused. Huh? When I did my research, what I learned was that secular artists, they sing about their lives. We may not like it. It sounds foolish, but it's their life. Gospel artists don't really sing about their life. They sing about what they think your life is about. Yeah. Reason why I say that, because I know Tamla Man. Tamla Man options are few. <laughs> Stay woke. Tamla Man options few. When every time I cut my TV on, she got a tie, she in a Tyler Perry play, Tyler Perry movie. Got her own sitcom, own radio TV show, own tour, just wrote a book, won two Grammys. She ain't talking about her life. <laughs> talking about yours. Yeah. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful, man. You got to be careful on what you always taking in because sometimes that might be what's making the way you can't smile. Well, you can't laugh. See, I'm upbeat. I'm upbeat. I don't let little stuff get me down. Little stuff, it can't possibly get me down. Okay? And it pains me when I see my good Christian folk getting down, especially over little stuff. Like, let's say, like, when, when the gas get high. It don't be a whole lot of secular folk tripping or worldly folk. It be my good church folk passing up 15 gas stations. <laughs> trying to save up. What is that? What is that? That's, that's, that's 205. I can get 203. And you done almost drove to Tampa trying to save two cents. And I bet God be looking down going, really? 
you don't trust me for two cents? Yeah, you don't trust me for two cents? reason why I don't trip over little stuff like when the gas get high, because I understand when gas is high, sin is low. I said I don't trip because I understand when gas is high, sin is low. Yeah. See, when the gas is low, sin is running all through Orlando. When the gas is low, phone calls in the middle of the night are totally different. Oh, y'all acting funny. Okay. When the gas is low, you could live in Orlando. And your boo could live in Tampa. When the gas is low, phone call in the middle of the night be like this. Hello? What's up? Nothing. You sleep? A little. Why? I'm about to drive down there. Okay, hurry up. That's how it is when the gas is. But when the gas is high, that's a whole nother phone call in the middle of the night. When the gas high, you could live in Orlando. And your boo could live in Orlando. <laughs> and that phone call be more like Hello? Was I? Nothing. You sleep? A little. Why? Oh, because I'm in for the night. Uh, I'm just calling, checking on you, seeing how you doing. You going to church Sunday? I'll see you there. So while you be complaining, the Lord really be making all things work together for your good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got to get to the point where you ain't super tripping about that. Now watch it. I want to give you some stuff off my new project. Let me give you some uh, my latest project. I got a uh, project. It's called My Jokes Matter, and uh, I want to give you some of it um, tonight. Um, the good Lord has shown me revelation, and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm for real. Uh, <laughs> he showed me the revelation. I want to share it with you on tonight, uh, y'all. I'm looking at church. I travel every weekend, so I get a chance to see churches all across the country. And, uh, and I'm looking at churches, and what I'm noticing is this same theme of um, 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 the numbers for church across the country are going down. New. The thing about it, I saw the lightning going. I thought it was the laws out here, but then that's lightning, lightning. Okay. Um, the numbers are down at the churches, and so um, because I was drugged to church, I like I didn't have a choice. But even my son now, my son is nine, and they have things like AA. He played AAU ball. And that takes him out of church a lot. And I'm looking at myself like, man, if this, if this was going on during my day, I wouldn't have been able to play AAU ball. You know, because my dad had been like, cuz, no. No, you're going to be at church Sunday, bottom line. Uh, but my son, he missed a gang of church. And, and so I started doing research, and I was wondering, you know, what can the church do in order to uh, captivate those that typically don't go to church? What is it going to take? And, 
Um, man, it came to me, y'all. Uh, my good friend invited me to the Texan game. Uh, that's our football team in Houston. Uh, we're called the Houston Texans. Uh, we sorry. Uh, but we make it to the playoffs every year. Uh, but we sorry. And uh, he told me, Pastor, he said, hey, uh, come to the game. And um, um, uh, when you get to, uh, come to the game and come early because we tailgate. I say, oh, man, all right, I'll come through there. I'll come after church. He said, no, 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 no. You got to get there early. We tailgate. I say, what time is tailgate? He said, we get out there by 6 a.m. This is on a Sunday. I'm talking about folk off day. <laughs> you get into a tailgate earlier than you would typically get to your job. And this your off day. Stay woke. Pay attention. So I said, all right, I'll come through. Y'all, when I get out there, it was unbelievable. If you want to see true, genuine fellowship, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, to go to a tailgate for the church to get to this next level, this next dimension where we getting the folk coming, we got to increase the fellowship aspect. Stay with me. Um, I walk out there. When I walk out there, I see all this. I say, oh my God, patio furniture and dinette sets and living room sets and big screen, flat screens and jacuzzis and all type of stuff out here. What I noticed was everybody out there was operating in their gift. They was doing what they do well, with no criticism, no judgment, not a whole lot of rules. Everybody just doing their thing. Okay, y'all looking at fun, let me show you. Okay, so over here, I like this. I want to put this on my one of the walls in my house. I want to just tell y'all that. Uh, but over here, over here you had the Asian community, and they was over here with they shrimp fried rice and they sushi and they sake and they egg rolls and they fortune cookies and all this type of stuff, right? And they was just sharing, just giving, man, you wanna try it here, bam. Over here you had the Hispanics and they had they nachos, they tacos, they burritos, they coronas, they uh, <laughs> margaritas and uh, and they were so nice. Marcos, you want one? I was like, nah, I don't drink. But let me taste it. I mean, <laughs> oh, taste and see. I mean, you know. Over here, you had the white community, and they had their sandwiches, and they cheese, and they crackers, and they wines, and they hummus, and they trail mix, and they couscous. But then over here, you had my people, black people, fried chicken, fried fish, fried shrimp, gumbo, barbecue, Hennessy, Tangeray, Jack Daniels, Cavazier, Jim Bean, Ciroc, Armandale, Coors Light, Miller Light, Bud Light, all the lights, let your light so shine that men may see your good work. I mean, it was lit out there. Here's the point. It was time for the game to start. I look at my boy, I say, hey, bro, it's time for the game to start. Y'all ready? He say, man, shoot, we gonna stay out here. I said, what? He said, man, here go the tickets. If you wanna go, go on, go in, but we gonna hang out here. I say, let me get this straight. So we at the game, <laughs> but we not going in the game. What I'm trying to share with you is that the fellowship outside was so contagious that you don't even have to come inside. And there's a new generation of people, I don't care how pretty the church is going to get, how well pastor preach, how well the praise team sings, so forth and so on. It's just gonna be some people, they just not coming in. And it's gonna be up to us to take what we've learned in, out. You with me?
We got to take what we learn in, out. I just believe now it just got to be a new, it's got to be a new day. It's got to be a change. Who baby is that that need a whooping? <laughs> Who baby is that? Back in my day, they would take this knuckle right here, sister, just... <laughs> when nobody looking, just say, shut up. But I think there's got to be, there's got to be new, there's got to be new ministries. It's got to be new ministries, not the church. Not the traditional ministries of, the, you know, the ushers, the, the, the such and such and such and such. But ministries where people are utilizing their actual gifts and talents. You're talking about jump? Talking about jump? Talking about jump That's just, sir, that's where it's at now. I think because, see, when I was growing up, I don't know if y'all, I don't know if it was like this in Orlando, but wasn't nothing open on Sundays when I, when I grew up in Houston. Wasn't nothing open on Sunday but church. But now everything open on Sunday. And so now the churches compete. The church is competing with everything. And I'm going to tell you, it's five churches. It's five churches in this world right now. These are the top five churches. I want to give them to you. I want to tell y'all this tonight, but I, I got to give them. It's five, these are the five top churches that all churches should be gleaning from. Costco. <laughs> Sam's. Walmart, Starbucks, and Chick-fil-A. If you think I'm lying, watch this. If you are a member of Costco, put your hands up. If you're a member of Sam's, put your hands up. If you frequent Walmart, put your hands up. If you frequent Starbucks, put your hands up. If you frequent Chick-fil-A, put your hands up. Now, you think you're a member of Jump. No. Those your churches. But watch this here. For good reason. It's something that they do that we all should be looking at. I love, I can put Costco and Sam's together. I, have, I got membership to both. These are my favorite stores. Costco and Sam's. These are my two favorite stores in the entire world. But I paid attention to what it is that they do that attracts me. First of all, I'm a member. They gave me a card. It's in my wallet. And because I'm a member, they let me be. Oh, they let me be. When I walk in, they don't put no pressure on me. Only thing they ask, you need a basket. They, that's, all, that's all they ask. They let me be. When I walk in, they don't say, hey, tie your shoes. They don't say, hey, take your hat off. You know, they don't say, hey, lower the skirt, you know, or whatever. They, they, they just let me be first They because they, I'm a member. I'm a member. They let me be. What I really love is they have all these sample stations. <laughs> listen, listen. They got all these sample stations and they just give. They just like, you know, try this. I just be trying stuff. Matter of fact, when I go pick up my son from, my son from school, I take him to Costco or Sam's. That's where we go eat. He be like, Dad, I'm hungry. I got a place for you. Because I'm a member. I ain't got to pay for this. I'm a member. I just go and I just, I eat. It's a beautiful thing. Walmart. Look what Walmart do. Walmart. Anywhere you can go where you can get a lawnmower and a loaf of bread under the same roof. What well, Walmart is saying is, man, whatever you need, we got it. And our church has got to get to the point to where whatever folk need, right here. People think that they're going to get blessed up here. And that's cool. I mean, I ain't trying to act like you can't. But man, you be sitting next to the blessing every day. I mean, every Sunday. Man, people come to church need a job. Pastor be trying. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. You won't even talk to him. <laughs> your neighbor is a manager. Supervisor. Know somebody that's hiring. But we'll never know because we don't never talk. You know, we don't even talk. We don't even talk, right? 
And Walmart is saying, man, you got to be more than a sermon, a song, and a prayer. You got to be a job. You got to be a ride. You got to be advice. You got to be all kind of, you know, what church be. Moving on. Take Starbucks. I don't even, man, I don't even drink coffee, teas, and a little patience. I ain't do that. I go to Starbucks for the fellowship. I do. For the movers and the shakers. There's always a, a geeky white boy in there with a laptop. Some dreadhead black dude. These be smart people. I'm right there with them. I'm trying to find what's next. What's the next move? What's the, what's the next move of God? Because they are ahead, right? Because they know this type of stuff. But what I love about Starbucks, they never say, hey, if you ain't buying nothing, get out of here. They never say that. They, it just be crowded with people, people that ain't even drinking, eating, or nothing. Just sitting there using up free Wi-Fi. <laughs> they never tell you, get out. Because they understand if you keep coming, if you keep coming, you're going to get up in that line at some point. Yeah, let me get a, a, a mocha latte, super califragilistic <laughs> expiality. You're going to get something. Last but not least, watch this here, Pastor. Man, this killed me. I was, uh, I went to Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A. I went to Chick-fil-A. Um, Y'all, one day, it was storming in Houston. And I went to Chick-fil-A, and the line was wrapped around the, the Lowe's and the Home Depot. I mean, the line, they drive through line, just long line, because they members go to church in bad weather. It's crazy. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that don't stop them. They, boom, they still, I'm going to get them nuggets. And so, it's all right. They showed up. So when I got in the line, I'm in the line, and the closer I got, I saw this black girl outside in the storm with her umbrella taking orders. I got mad. I'm about to call Black Lives Matter. Why is this, why is this girl out here in this bad weather? When I got up to her, she was like, hey, welcome to Chick-fil-A, how may I serve you? I said, why are you out here? She was like, well, it's my job. I said, well, why they got you out here? <laughs> you know, this is me talking. She was like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, what you having? I was like, man, let me get the nuggets, fries, you know, lemonade, <laughs> fruit cup. When she took my order, she said, anything else? I said, that's all. She was like, it was my pleasure. I'm mad. I get my food. I get my food. I drive off. Pay attention. Y'all finna miss the, you finna miss the part. Hit the baby. Hit the baby. <laughs> I'm about her. Hit the baby, baby. Hit it. Hit it. Or grab this little part right here with two fingers. Just. But watch this. I was driving off. I was driving off, y'all. And it dawned on me, why am I upset? Because she got a good attitude in a storm. What are they teaching? at these particular entities, and we, can, and we can actually glean from it. So here it is. I'm about to close, as the good pe preachers would say. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm in my barbershop, y'all, as I am. I'm in my barbershop, and in my barbershop, they have a, um, uh, we have these in-depth conversations at the barbershop, right? And I go to a barbershop where they, um, where they speak in an unknown tongue. Um, <laughs> Y'all got me? Yeah, it's a lot of Peters at my barbershop. And uh, they, they raw, they unfilled, I mean, no filter, you know, and I love it. I, I'm cool with it. I don't get offended. I, I'm, I'm okay, right? Because that's how I want to hear it. But the question came up, why men particularly don't go to church? Who they say? They was like, man, man why y'all don't go to church? So my barber went first. He said, shoot, I don't go to church because, shoot, the people fake. Yeah, my, this is what my barber said. Eh, talk about y'all. Eh. He said, I don't go to church because the folk are fake. I said, what? He said, yeah, everybody in there fake. I said, nah, bro. Folk not fake. They understand they need a savior, okay? Trying to get their lives together the best way they can. Some people go about it in some strange ways. But nevertheless, everybody in there just 
realizing they need a higher, they need something greater to make it. Cool. Next dude jumped up and said, I don't go to church because all they want is your money. I said, homeboy, where else do you go in the world? Well, they don't want <laughs> your money. I said, I don't even, you get what you pay for. I don't even want to go somewhere where they don't want money. It can me how when money come up in church, folk get tight as if, as if, look at this stuff, this costs. Yeah, that cost. Ah, cost. <laughs> Things cost, man. Just get used to it. Get off this free kick. Things cost, right? But the last dude, Pastor, this is the one that got me. He got up. That boy said, man, I don't go to church because I don't see where I fit. I said, what? He said, I don't see where I fit. That's why I don't go. I done tried to go to some churches. I don't fit. And man, y'all, he got me because even when I don't fit, I know how to fit in. But just because you fit in don't mean you fit. I'll show you what I mean. Like at my daddy's church, when they need an usher, I know how to usher. But I don't want to. <laughs> but I know how to do it. I know how to go. <laughs> I know how to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I remember my father church, man, my daddy, he had this thing where he would actually run members away. He didn't know he was doing it, but he'll run folk away because he did not take the time out to get their fit. He didn't he get their fit. So let me show you what I mean. Like, my daddy, he'll preach a sermon, right? He'll preach a sermon. And my father, he feel like, listen, if I done studied all week, when I open the doors of church, somebody going to join. Or I won't close them. <laughs> Man, my daddy will hold, we open the doors of church he, all, all night. He going, he going, is there one today? <laughs> yeah, because my dad's like, he ain't, he, ain't, he, ain't, he ain't waste his studying. Is that one? By letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Is that one, right? Nobody would join. Nobody would come. Then my dad would say, okay, I guess we all saved in here then. <laughs> but I want to make this last appeal to you. So if you leave here tonight and you drive home and when you get to your house, there's a mean man the devil has sent that's hiding behind your front door <laughs> with a 12-gauge shotgun. And as soon as you open your door, sh boom! Everybody turn to, ooh. Are you sure heaven will be your home? Man, you'll start seeing dudes just walk down there. They ain't want to join. He just, I got to come now, right? When they would get there, my daddy would give them the right hand of fellowship, welcome, welcome them to the church. But then he'll say, brother, I know a good spot for you. He don't even know him. He ain't met with him. He's not a prophet. He just said, I know a good place for you. I want to put you in the parking lot ministry. <laughs> Brother be like, man, I don't want to be outside. My daddy would put folk in the sound booth. They not engineers. They have no interest in sound. Just nothing. Just put them in there and then have a the nerd to get mad at them. Because they don't fit there. He'll say stuff like, hey, man, turn me up in the monitors. Dude in the back. <laughs> hey, brother, turn me up. Dude, just push them all up. Just, uh. So the thing is, the thing is, watch this, it's helping folk find they fit. Then when they find they fit, they can flourish at the church. 
when they find they fit, when they find they fit, when they find they fit, because, you know, the church is full of folk who, I ain't going to lie, you shouldn't be in the choir. I ain't talking about nobody in here. This is my first time here. I ain't even heard y'all choir, so I ain't talking about y'all. I'm just talking about what I see. And the reason why I know that, because I was in my daddy choir. And I was just helping the ministry, though. I was just, <laughs> I'm just helping my daddy. This is how we eat. But, uh, <laughs> but I was in the choir. And I remember the day I quit. We were singing this song. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. And, oh, Lord, we bless your name. And, we lift our voice, you know, Tuesday thing. But it gets to this point, it say, for your goodness and your mercy towards us. And the praise team leader, look, choir director, he going to come and say, hey, uh, I don't want y'all to say good. I want y'all to say good. I said, what? He said, I don't want y'all to say good. I want y'all to say good. I said, look, homeboy, I went to college. Uh, that's not how the word is pronounced. He said, I don't care how it's pronounced. I want you to say it the way I want you to say it. I said, man, I ain't finna say no good, whatever. He talking about, well, if you ain't gonna say good, then you can get out the choir. I say, well, goodbye. And then I told him, and your, your pants too tight, too. Everybody in there talking about you. They ain't gonna say it to your face. But since I'm about to leave your little old choir, your pants too tight. Loosen your britches up, buddy. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. The choir wasn't my fit. And so when we get these new ministries now, folk in here that do hair, folk that do nails, and, and, and folk do taxes, and, to do all this here. All this type of stuff should be available, I believe, just going forward on Sundays. It should be available on Sundays. It should be available because church got to become now the hangout like Costco and Sam's and Walmart. Just, just, let, me, just let me come in. Let me come holler at folk. Let me come meet people. Let me come let folk use their gifts. I know a bunch of men. I think the church should tailgate. I do. Some of your husbands won't come in here, but they'll come out there and barbecue. I know a bunch of men who love to, they won't never come in here, but they'll love to work on your cars. Who in here need oil change? Look at you. Wouldn't it be lie you come to church and you got the brothers out there taking care of that? You can have a speak out there. They listen to the pastor. They ain't going to come in here, but they can hear and they be out there. <laughs> Ooh, pass on them today, ain't it? Ah, uh, duh. All right. I think that's my time. Are oh, y'all judging? I just talked about this. They never do this at Costco. Y'all tripping because I got a flip phone? <laughs> it's a phone. It works. Some of you need to humble yourself. You need to, I'm not lying, you need to humble yourselves. Yeah, if your job ain't upgraded you, why you had an iPhone 9? <laughs> humble yourself. You keep going up and upgrading and, 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 and your money ain't been upgraded. Humble yourself. Oh, I feel a message coming out. <laughs> well, this is a good place to go because, y'all, let me tell you something. There's pros and cons to this phone. There's pros and cons. I'm going to start with the cons. Okay, I ain't going to lie. I, okay, I can't get on Instagram and I can't get on all this social media stuff. I don't need to be on there anyway. Right? Can't get on that. Right? And I ain't gonna lie, I can't get no picture, it's rough. Uh, <laughs> screen ain't big enough for a picture. Uh, everything like a little dot. Uh, 
and it take a long time to text. Uh, Cause I gotta keep pushing the same button to get to the letter. So it take me about 10 minutes to text hello. Um, uh, yeah, but now let me give you the pros. My bill is low. I can hang up in people's face like this. Shut up. Yeah. 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 And the number one thing about this phone is, <laughs> like some of y'all in here right now, you probably got one ball on that phone. I ain't charged this since Valentine's Day. And I'm fully loaded in here. I'm Marcus Wiley, man. I appreciate y'all. Thank you.